Hi, this is Eric for Ochoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with the projection nodes in Octane for Maya. And for this video, I'm using the machinery underscore O3 dot MA scene. So I'm going to select this surface down here and let's apply a glossy material. Let's go into the attributes for that glossy material and I'm going to add a texture to the diffuse input. So I'll click on this checker box to bring up the create render node window and I'll choose Octane Image Texture. Click on this folder and within the source images directory I'm going to find the panel 06 diffuse texture and apply it. Now by default the texture is using the surfaces UVs. So if I look in the UV editor that's what the UVs for the surface look like because the UVs for all the pieces of the machine have been arranged in this 0 to 1 space. So we might want to have a little bit more detail in our texture map then the UVs will allow us. So that's where the projection nodes come in handy. So if I go back to that um, surface, to the material, in the image texture node, I'll click under projection. And in the create render node window, let's use box projection since this surface is kind of a box already. Now you can see where you see the texture much more clearly. Within the box projection node attributes, I can add a transform node. So for instance, transform 3D, which I could use to say, rotate the image, scale it, translate it, and so on. So if we take a look in Hypershade under the projection section within Octane, you'll see that many of the projection nodes are fairly self-explanatory. For instance, box, works like a cube style projection, cylindrical projection wraps uh, the texture around the surface in a cylindrical fashion, spherical for spherically mapped images. This works great when, say, projecting an HDRI image on a spherical sky map. So for example, if we take a look in Photoshop, this is a spherically mapped image. So you'd wanna have an image in this kind of aspect ratio that's, that's ideal for a sphere. So I just want to cover a couple of the more unusual projection nodes. The OSL projection and OSL UV projection I'll talk about in the video on OSL texture nodes. So let's take a look at triplanar projection. So I'm going to create a new octane material. Let's do an octane glossy material. Graph it here in hypershade. Now we did talk about the octane triplanar texture in a previous video. So if I go to mapping, I'll create an octane triplanar texture. But you also find an octane projection, there is a triplanar projection. So these are meant to be used together. So I'll create an octane triplanar projection. Let's go up here and apply this. Let's apply the shader to these spherical objects up here. And what I'm going to do is take the Octane Triplanar Texture here and middle mouse button drag it over Diffuse. And you can see it's being projected from six different sides and we have it color coordinated here with red, green, and blue textures. So let's add a texture to the positive x-axis texture and we'll do a checks texture. And see over here we have checkerboard. It's easier to see. Let's hide this outer surface so we can just see the sphere. And I'm going to create a second checks texture and connect it to the positive Z axis texture. So let's create another checks texture. So you can see they're kind of side by side here. So, so far so good. I haven't actually connected up the triplanar projection yet. So I just want to quickly demonstrate something that I think will make the use of this a bit more clear. If I select the triplanar texture and let's add a transform, I'll do a octane transform 3D and let's rotate this Z by 30 degrees. So you see it's rotating the entire texture on the surface, but it's not affecting that checks texture that checker pattern still stays in the same place even though the triplanar texture is being rotated. 
So it might be in some situations where that is not ideal. That is where the triplanar projection node comes in handy. So now what I'll do is I'll select my octane checks texture, middle mouse button, drag it onto projection. And you can see now how it is actually projecting the texture properly. And it's also being rotated with the transform of that triplanar texture. So if I select the triplanar texture, find that transform node and continue to rotate it, you'll see that checker pattern rotates properly as well. So that is how the triplanar projection node works. So let's take a look at camera projection. I'm going to create a new camera. Let's call it camera one. And I'm going to select all these surfaces and apply a glossy material. Let's go to that glossy material node and let's, for the diffuse texture, choose an octane image texture and I'll use that same panel 06 diffuse texture. So you can see the texture is mapped based on the UVs. Let's take that camera out where we can see it. And let's go to that diffuse texture. I'm going to switch to the camera, camera one. And in the attributes for that texture node, I'm going to go down here and turn on camera map texture. When I do that, you can see that it maps the texture based on the view of the camera that I'm looking through. So if I switch to the perspective view, you can see how that texture is being projected from the camera. If you want to specify the name of the camera, you can do that using this field right here, map camera shape. So for camera one, that would be camera shape one. So let's go back to that texture. And I'll type in camera shape one. If you change the position of the camera and you want to update the texture, you can go in here and turn off camera map texture and turn it back on again. And it will be mapped from the camera's new position. So that's how you use projection nodes in Octane for Maya.